Welcome to Insight of Thermology. This is Dr. Amrit welcoming you to the second part on extraocular muscle anatomy. Today we are studying the anatomy of superior oblique muscle and the anatomy of inferior oblique muscle. Coming to the superior oblique, so where does the superior oblique arises from? Unlike the various recti which are taking their origin from the annulus of Zinn, the superior oblique takes its origin from a part of the sphenoid bone which is situated medially to the annulus of Zinn and slightly superior. And this part is the lesser wing of the sphenoid, right? So as you can see, this is the annulus of Zinn and from the annulus of Zinn, all the recti muscles are getting originated. However, the superior oblique muscle is getting originated or taking its origin from a, a part of the sphenoid bone and that part is the lesser wing of the sphenoid. Now, another important point that we should remember regarding the superior oblique muscle is that the superior oblique muscle is the longest and the thinnest muscle uh, of uh, thinnest among all the extraocular muscle and the length of the superior oblique is about 60 millimeters long. The superior oblique after arising from the sphenoid bone, it travels parallel to the uh, medial rectus, okay, or we can say it travels parallel to the medial wall of the orbit and then it encounters the trochlea which is a pulley present at the medial aspect, superior medial aspect of the orbit. Then it engages in the trochlea or it passes through the trochlea and then gets inserted in the posterior aspect of the eye. That means posterior to the equator. Now, if you, if you would notice the direction of the superior oblique, it is actually traveling posteriorly and also laterally and getting inserted below the superior rectus muscle behind the equator. As you can see over here, it is taking origin somewhere from behind, okay, behind the orbit. That means somewhere in the posterior orbit and then it is traveling through this trochlea then once it travels through the trochlea it gets inserted below the superior rectus muscle behind the equator so that is very important now a few important points are there about the trochlea trochlea is basically acting as a pulley for the superior oblique and trochlea is partly bony and partly cartilaginous structure. The part of the trochlea which is closer to the orbit, okay, the medial part, since the trochlea is located medially in the orbit, is basically bony. And the part of the trochlea which is lateral is basically cartilaginous, okay. Now, trochlea is basically attached to the frontal bone uh, through a spine which is called the spina trochlear and it lies in the superior medial aspect of the orbit. Now why trochlea is important is that the superior oblique muscle as we know it travels from behind that means from the lesser wing of the sphenoid and then at a distance of about 10 millimeters from the trochlea that means when the muscle is about 10 millimeters away from entering the trochlea it, it becomes tendinous and then the tendon continues and expands and gets inserted below the superior rectus muscle. So that is very important that the overall length of the muscle is about 60 millimeters and the part uh, which is present before the trochlea is called the pretrochlear part that is about 40 millimeters and the length of the part of superior oblique after it has encountered or after it has passed through the trochlea is about 20 millimeters making it the longest muscle in the eye which is about 60 millimeters in length and the angle with which it bends from the trochlea is about 54 degrees. Trochlea is a very important structure and the passage of the superior oblique muscle through the trochlea makes it even more important. As the muscle passes through the trochlea, there's a lot of friction which can occur because of constant wear and tear and this is prevented by the presence of a trochlear bursa. Okay. The trochlea is also important because although the muscle originates from the posterior part of the orbit, the functional origin is situated at the trochlea. That means the direction of the pull will always be towards the trochlea in the direction of the post trochlear part of the superior oblique, however, uh, not uh, near not near its anatomical origin. So whatever actions of superior oblique are occurring, they're occurring at the trochlea and therefore trochlea will act as a functional origin for the superior oblique. Coming to some of the advanced measurements regarding the trochlea, the width is about 10, the length is about 40 millimeters and the tendon length is about 20 millimeters. So the total length of the muscle comes to about 60 millimeters which is a high yield point.
What about some of the important angles that the superior oblique forms? One uh, most important one that you should remember is the angle between the insertion of superior oblique and the visual axis. Just like what we have discussed in the superior rectus and inferior rectus anatomy that these two recti are actually forming an angle of 23 degrees with the visual axis of the eye. Similarly here the superior oblique insertion that means which is happening in this direction is going to form an angle with the visual axis the axis which is passing through the center of the pupil and that angle is about 51 degrees. This is very important when we go to the part 3 of the video where we will discuss the uh, logic behind the extraocular movements. Next is how much angle does the direction of muscle changes um, at the trochlea. So the angle is about 54 degrees. This is what I already discussed that the direction of the muscle changes at the trochlea and it changes by about 54 degrees. Next, what is the angle between the superior rectus and superior oblique direction? It is about 105 degrees. So what I mean to say is if superior rectus is like this and then you know that the superior oblique is coming from behind and getting inserted like this. So the angle between these two things is about 105 degrees, an obtuse angle. But if you want to remember the angles, remember the first two that is 51 degrees that it is forming with the visual axis and 54 degrees that is the change in the direction of the muscle at trochlea. Now the insertion of superior oblique is also very important. You can see that it is inserted in a fan. It is actually spread in a fan like direction. So such that the anterior part is more laterally situated compared to the posterior part of the eye. And the total length of insertion is about 7 to 18 millimeters. And it is very close to the vortex veins also. Now the anterior part of the um, superior oblique muscle insertion is basically associated with intorsion. Okay. And so at this point, just remember that intorsion is the medial rotation of the eyeball and the posterior fibers over here are actually associated with causing depression of the eyeball right so this insertion becomes even more important because the anterior fibers have some uh, some other role and the posterior fibers have some other function of the movement in the eye now uh, you should know the distance of the insertion specifically this is a, this is of surgical importance okay so where is the anterior end of the superior oblique muscle inserted from the, the limbus and from the superior rectus insertion now we know that the superior oblique is getting inserted below the superior rectus right so what is the different uh, what is the distance of this anterior end from the superior rectus and what is the distance from the limbus so if you consider this anterior part of the eye okay you can see that if you consider the anterior part of this uh, superior oblique let's consider what is the distance of uh, the superior oblique insertion anterior end from the limbus so the distance comes to about 13.8 millimeters okay as shown in this diagram and the uh, distance from the superior rectus insertion is about 3 to 4.5 similarly if you consider the posterior end distance from the limbus that will be about 20 millimeters and from the superior rectus post uh, superior rectus insertion the distance of the posterior part of the insertion of superior oblique will be about 13 millimeters. So all this is of surgical importance. Let us now talk about the actions of the superior oblique muscle. The primary action of the superior oblique muscle is intorsion. Intorsion is the rotation of the eyeball towards inside. So in this case, the eye is moving uh, in the um, anti-clockwise direction and that is what is meant by intorsion. Coming to the secondary action of the superior oblique muscle and that is the depression. And depression is the movement of the eyeball downwards. Coming to the tertiary action which is common between the superior oblique and the inferior oblique is the abduction and abduction is the outward rotation of the eyeball. Now coming to the, the second oblique muscle which we have and that is the inferior oblique muscle. Now the longest muscle was the superior oblique muscle and the shortest extraocular muscle that we have is the inferior oblique muscle and the length is about 37 millimeters. Now another important point about inferior oblique muscle is that it is the only muscle which is arising from the anterior orbit. If you would remember from the rectus muscle and from the superior oblique origin 
they all are arising from the posterior orbit near the uh, orbital apex or near the annulus of zin however the inferior oblique is uh, is arising from the anterior orbit anterior orbit from the orbital surface of the maxilla as you can see over here near the nasolacrimal groove which is situated here okay lateral to the nasolacrimal groove it is arising from the orbital floor of the orbit coming to the course and insertion after it arises from the orbit as you can see over here it is going to travel upwards posteriorly and laterally below the inferior rectus muscle so this is the inferior rectus muscle and oblique is passing below the inferior rectus and then it is traveling laterally and posteriorly to get inserted somewhere behind the lateral rectus muscle so that is a very important point now over here some important relations that you should remember is that i told you that superior oblique gets inserted below the superior rectus so always the recti are above and the obliques are below the recti so superior oblique is below the superior rectus and the inferior oblique is below the inferior rectus so that is very important coming to the advanced measurements the width is 9.6 length is 37 millimeters and the tendon is even more smaller about only 1 to 2 millimeters in the uh, length now if you would see here one more important point that i want you to remember is that the recti muscle superior rectus inferior rectus lateral and medial rectus they are getting inserted anterior to the equator however the superior oblique and the inferior oblique they are getting inserted behind the equator and that is one reason why superior oblique and inferior oblique will cause a totally different action from superior rectus and inferior rectus we know that the superior rectus will cause elevation and the inferior rectus will cause depression however the superior oblique which is situated behind the equator if it contracts it will pull the posterior part of the eyeball upwards and in turn what will happen is the anterior part of the eyeball will go, will go downwards and that is the reason why the superior oblique will cause depression of the eyeball similarly the inferior oblique when it contracts it actually pulls the posterior part of the eye downward because of the posterior insertion and the anterior part of the eye will go up and the resultant action what it causes is the elevation of the eye so i hope that is clear why inferior oblique and superior obliques have different action from the superior rectus and inferior rectus and that the main reason is that the superior obliques and the inferior obliques are inserted posterior to the equator and acting on the posterior part of the eyeball whereas the recti are inserted anterior to the equator now some of the important measurements regarding the insertion of the inferior oblique as i told you it is inserted posterior to the equator and it is situated behind the lateral rectus muscle so the distance between the insertion of the inferior oblique and the lateral rectus insertion is about 10 millimeters and you can see that it is very closely related to the inferior vortex vein and it is situated about 1 to 2 millimeters below the fovea right and the anterior part of the muscle just like in superior oblique it here acts for the torsional movements that is extorsion and the posterior end will cause elevation now let us talk about the actions of the inferior oblique muscle the primary action of the inferior oblique muscle is extorsion extorsion is the outward rotation of the eyeball along the y-axis that means in this case it will be the clockwise rotation of the eyeball the secondary action of the inferior oblique is the elevation and elevation and depression they occur along the x-axis the tertiary action which is common again between the inferior oblique and the superior oblique is the uh, outside rotation of the eyeball which occurs along the z axis and that is called abduction or abduction. 